On April 2nd, the citizens of Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas, will have a chance to vote on our next new mayor. The two candidates who advanced in the primary are Mrs. Ann Morgia and Mr. Mark Holland. Please join us as we talk with each candidate and quite possibly and ultimately the next new mayor of the Unified Government, Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas. Um, first question. Okay. You've been a successful commissioner uh, for quite a few years. What made you decide to run for mayor? Well, I think um, as the third district commissioner, we've had some truly amazing successes. Um, we've developed lots of new housing stock um, at a fair market level. Um, we've brought incredible retail to the area, specifically um, a $3.2 million grocery store that we're building right now to a food desert area in Wyandotte County. We have a $60 million development off 39th and Rainbow Boulevard across from KU Med and KU Hospital. We've just had incredible success and what I'd like to be able to do is take that model and take it to other areas of our county that have struggled to see the economic development that would benefit their communities. Okay, would that be the Northeast End or the Midtown area? Yeah, it would be all areas. You know, Bonner Springs and Edwardsville are okay. part of our county as well. And okay. I think there needs to be um, more of an effort made with our city government to work with um, the entire county, as well as the Midtown area and the downtown and Northeast areas of our community. I think we have great opportunity there, and I think sometimes that gets overlooked because of all of the momentum around the Legends area. Okay. Um, what do you see as uh, our greatest attributes here in Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas? It's clearly our diversity. You know, you can go out to the Legends and do some of the most amazing things. Um, we have uh, the number one tourist attraction in the state of Kansas is, um, is the Legends area, and that's so exciting to have that in our county. But we also have some other really great things. We have great diversity in the city. We have these great mom and pop restaurants that have um, an ethnic history to them um, that are great food and great to go to and a whole lot of fun. And then Bonner Springs and Edwardsville have this very small town homey feel about them that, you know, it's a great place to raise a family and be involved in their community. It's just a wonderful county to live in with just about anything anybody could ever want in it. Okay, explain to our viewers uh, the accomplishments you and the ANDA, uh, which is the Argentine Neighborhood Development Association, have achieved in the Argentine area and how you were able to achieve it. Okay, well, I'll refer to ANDA as ANDA. It's a 501c3 not-for-profit community development corporation. It's a mouthful, but basically this is what it is. It's a charitable organization that can receive charitable dollars in order to offset the cost to do projects like economic development, infrastructure improvements, and just general improvements in the Argentine area to improve the quality of life for the residents that live there. So I'll give you just one example in regard to um, infrastructure. Okay. We were able to, um, curb and sidewalk was one of the most important things to the people that lived in that particular area. In particular, replacement curb and sidewalk. And we raised $150,000 in private dollars, um, which was matched by the unified government, per the unified government sidewalk and curb policy. So we had $300,000, and with that $300,000, I reached out to partners like Joe Fahey with Fahey Construction and Bill Geiger with Geiger Ready Mix and asked them to help me stretch those dollars to be able to get um, the most um, in curb and sidewalk possible for my district. And I'm proud to say at the end of the day when we were finished um, doing all that work, we were able to put in almost a million dollars worth of curb and sidewalk which from a tax perspective, if you look at that, that's almost a 10 to one match or might be slightly over a 10 to one okay. match. We're very excited about our ability to get things done and to bring the private sector and the public sector together to stretch those tax dollars so that that burden doesn't always fall on the taxpayer. Okay, how long had you been with ANDA? Um, I was a founding uh, board member of ANDA and I came on in 2004 as a volunteer and was a volunteer until 2007 where I was hired as the executive director. Okay, do you have, you have strong roots there in Argentine? 
Yeah, well, actually, I'm originally from a small town in Iowa. Okay. And I just happened to marry a gentleman that grew up in Argentina. Okay. He's from Wyandotte County. And, I think we um, know who he is. Don't yeah, we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Carlos Murguia, um, he's my husband. He's currently a United States uh, federal court judge. Okay. And um, it was his um, passion for that community that made us stay there and build a new home in that community. And that's how I became familiar with Argentine. Okay. And, you know, as a, a mother and um, a wife and um, a member of that community, it was important for me to participate in that community and help it make, make it be the best place possible for that's, people to live. That's wonderful. Um, <clears throat> the mayor and CEO, of course, of Wanda County, Kansas City, Kansas, is responsible for the entire city. I think we've touched a little bit on this, uh, not just one area. Do you foresee the same successes uh, such as sidewalks, curbs, grocery stores, uh, housing for the entire city? And if so, would you propose obtaining the funding for the entire city that you've been able to obtain for, uh, for ONDA? Absolutely. Area? I think, you know, um, I've proven my ability to be able to get things done in my district. And I don't know why that would be any different or why anyone would think it'd be any different countywide. Um, you know, I've have some great relationships that are going to continue and they've already expressed their ability to support me and their desire to support me as mayor CEO. Um, it's just going to be a really great opportunity to take my skill set and take that countywide. You know, that's really not um, as you don't have that opportunity as much as an in-district commissioner. Um, that's more uh, the job of the mayor to facilitate countywide sorts of initiatives. Correct. I think my experience and my partnerships and relationships, um, not only in the metropolitan area but regionally, are going to be able to. I'm going to be able to bring those to the table um, okay. and do things countywide. Okay. Well, we're going to take a short break. Okay. We're come back with Mrs. Ann Regia, uh, one of the two candidates for mayor, Wanda County, Kansas City, Kansas. Okay, hi, and welcome back. We're here with Mrs. Ann Rakia, candidate for mayor of Wanda County, Kansas City, Kansas. Okay, let's start back with some of our um, other interesting questions. Um, some of the people in our community view you as uh, outspoken. How do you view yourself? I agree with them. You do. I'm very <laughs> outspoken. Okay. And um, I think that's what um, is helpful um, in order to get things done. You have to speak up. You have to be heard. Um, I really believe I'm the voice for the people that I represent. And um, in order to be that voice, you have to be heard. And so absolutely, I agree with that. And I think that's been very helpful with being able to get things done in my district. I agree. I agree yeah. since you've accomplished such such a great thing there in the um, Argentine area. Um, over the years with the different mayors, we've seen the developments and growth such as the Legends and uh, the Livestrong Stadium. Um, what, let's fast forward. What would we want your legacy, or what would you want your legacy to be here as mayor? Well, I'm really not in this to establish a legacy. Okay. I'm in this to make all of Wyandotte County a better place. And I would tell you <clears throat> that one of the places I would like to start mm -hmm. is I would like to continue the development that's happening out in the Village West area. But I also think that it is important to develop the Midtown area and the urban core and the Bonner Springs Edwardsville area just as much so that we can begin to get a handle on this incredibly high property tax rate that we have going on in Wyandotte County. I'd like to show you something. Sure. Um, I brought with me a map of Wyandotte County, and you can see out here in the Village West area, um, there aren't a lot of these red and blue dots, mm -hmm. which make up tax delinquent property, okay? And we're having a lot of growth out here, and you aren't seeing as much tax delinquency. But as you move in the city, in particular in the downtown and the northeast area of our community down here, you're seeing a large concentration of tax delinquent properties. And that is one of the reasons that our property tax rate continues to rise, is that we are growing poverty in our city at a faster rate than we are developing Western Wyandotte County. So what's happening is the tax burden is falling on 75% of our community 
for this 25% that is struggling. Now I will tell you in fairness to this area of our city, mm -hmm. um, if you've driven through that area recently, um, I'm not sure how to say this other than that I'm not sure what they're paying property tax for. Their infrastructure is very poor. They don't have a lot of um, economic development or retail opportunities there. Right. Um, unemployment is very high. So if we want the entire county, including those areas in Bonner Springs and Edwardsville to um, thrive, we've got to get our property tax rate down and we've got to take advantage of some of this um, available property and, and market it aggressively in the community and be that outspoken person that I am and bring development to these areas so that we broaden our tax base and ultimate re ultimately reduce the property tax rate for everyone in Wyandotte County. What ideas would you have for development in those areas, well, in the Northeast area that's struggling in Wyandotte County? Well, when you look at these areas, some people may say, oh my gosh, there are large parcels of ground that aren't paying their taxes. But you know, you can look at it two ways. That, that is a negative. Or the positive is you have large portions of ground that are developable. developable. Okay. And you absolutely could bring in um, economic development opportunities there. There's land available at a very low cost. So I think that could be intriguing to a lot of people. Okay. Let's talk about those that are not able to okay. <clears throat> is it pay their property taxes. Is there any relief that that we can ask for, that, that they can get assistance for in paying those delinquent taxes? I don't, in my opinion, Ms. Maria, I don't think that they want to be delinquent in their taxes. And I know that the unemployment rate is killing a lot of the individuals that are living in that area, as well as the entire county. Right. And they're looking for relief, you know, in our next mayor uh, for those type of issues so that they can stay in their homes, that they can find a job, and able to take care of their families. That's right. Yes. I think the most critical thing that we can do to begin to address the issue of poverty and begin to address the issue of some of these people not being able to pay their taxes is for decades. Um, things have been done to this area of the com our community, okay. but not necessarily with this area. So let me give you an example. One of the things I did in my district when I was elected commissioner is we did a survey. I wanted to know what the people of that community needed and wanted in order to be successful. And we've been able to turn that around immensely in my district. One issue was, um, it wasn't at the top of the list, but one of the things the people in my district wanted to see happen were job opportunities. So I partnered with different organizations that provide um, resume writing and interview training in order to be able to get a job and connections with jobs that are available. And we literally broke down unemployment by census block area and we brought those services to those blocks in the middle of the street. So if you could get your shoes on and you could get your coat on and walk out the front door, mm -hmm. you had an opportunity there. It's gonna take that level of outreach in that community. And really we need to start listening to our constituents. Um, I was elected to represent the people. I was not elected for my judgment or as much as I'd like to think um, that I'm incredibly bright. Okay. Um, I wasn't elected for that. I was elected to represent them and to be a voice for them. And I think that mindset is going to be what begins to change this area of our community in particular. So we're talking grassroots efforts to get out and get them uh, employable. Absolutely, and lots of outreach on my part as the mayor to develop collaborations and partnerships with those grassroots organizations doing the hard work on the ground every single day. Okay, we talked about the tax burden a little bit, or have we gotten to that? I don't think we've gotten to that yet. The tax burden in Wanda County, very high. Yes. <clears throat> BPU plays a part in that. Yes. How can we get our tax burdens uh, lessened or lowered so that we can all, um, I guess, live comfortably and mm -hmm. affordably here in Wyandotte County. I'm from Wyandotte County and I want to stay here. Good. I have no intentions we of want leaving. You here. Right, I don't have no <laughs> intentions of leaving or moving out. This is my county, so I want to know, you know, what can we look forward to in the future as far as having our our taxes lowered and the affordability here 
uh, be successful? Sure. Uh, well, I'm embarrassed to tell you today that I've been on the commission for six years, and I can tell you that I have been part of meetings with the Board of Public, Public Utilities less times than you can count on one hand. Okay. That is astonishing to me. We make major multi-million dollar decisions um, in regard to financing different initiatives by the Board of Public Utilities, yet I am sitting here telling you I know very little about their operations and very little about what happens with them internally. I think the next mayor of the city has to make a concerted, aggressive um, um, attempt to engage the BPU on a regular basis to the extreme of maybe even meeting on a monthly basis where our government and BPU come together. Because by keeping us apart, the people suffering are the people in our community that are having to pay those very high utility rates. The utility needs us, we need the utility, we need to work together to provide the best utility in the region and the best utility for the constituent that we serve. And I feel very strongly about that. Is there a reason in the past that that hasn't happened? And I don't mean to blast anyone out or put anybody on front street, but is there a reason that that hasn't happened in the past? You know, I don't, I don't really know why it hasn't happened. Um, you know, it just seems that there's a line drawn in the sand between BPU and the unified government. That's not gonna get us anywhere. We've got to reach out to that, that utility and we've got to bring those people in and we got to make them part of making regular decisions in our community. Um, ignoring them clearly isn't working because there are people that are unhappy. Right. Mm -hmm. There are a lot. So when they look at their bill, yes, they're very unhappy. They're not unhappy. Believe me, I get those phone calls and I don't like it either. <clears throat> right. Um, but I do think that there needs to be a better understanding of BPU in order to get those rates down where they're, that's better for the average constituent. Okay. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, let's talk a little bit about policies. Okay. You worked in as a commissioner before. Are there anything, any new policies? that you would like to see um, on the horizon or do you think everything is, is okay at this point? I think that the people of this city need to drive our policies and I feel strongly about that as well. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things I did when I became commissioner in my district is I did a survey of what the people felt was important, what they wanted and what they needed. Um, I would like to do a survey of all of Wyandotte County and I would like to break that up potentially by district because what's important to people in Piper or Bonner Springs and Edwardsville may not be necessarily what's important to those in the city. And the best way to develop policy that is good for all of Wyandotte County is to get input from all of the areas of Wyandotte County and then sit down and decide what policy is gonna move our entire, entire county forward. Um, what kind of ways would you get that input? Through a survey. Through survey. Yes, and I break it down by district. Um, Are so we that talking I, about phone survey or a paper survey? A paper survey. Okay. It was a survey that was done with um, ETC, a nationally recognized survey company. It was not done internally through the unified government. I think it's very important for government to have um, a, a distance from the survey so that the people's voice can really be heard. I would also like to see the 146 neighborhood groups and neighborhood associations throughout Wyandotte County engaged in creating those questions okay. um, so that they are able to find out what the community wants to see happen as well. I really like that idea of breaking it down in areas because you're right. What's important on the North End may not be as important uh, in the Piper area. Uh, I really, really do like that. Exactly, or even Midtown different. area. Right. You know, it may not be valued in Midtown, what's valued in the city or what's valued in Bonner. It just depends. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you a question real quickly about the Indian Springs uh, Shopping Center, which what used to be the gold jewel here in Wyandotte County, and it's no longer that way. Uh, right now, it, it's more of an eyesore, I think. What can we expect from that building there? You know, what you often hear from government, and our government in particular, is we've put out an RFP, uh, and that's a request for a proposal, for okay. people to come to us and propose an idea, that uh, a development plan. Um, we've got to do way more than that. 
We have to have a mayor that's willing to uh, get out there, um, go to conferences and go to economic development seminars and reach out to developers and really promote Wyandotte County. Um, I understand there's a process and an RFP needs to take place, but we need to be out there as the leaders in the face of Wyandotte County, shaking hands and getting to know people and selling our community and why this is gonna be incredibly beneficial for the developer as well as the community. And that just hasn't been done and I think that's clearly why you see the blight and the continued problems at Indian Spring that you continue to see. Um, the RFP, request for, pers for proposal, um, what do they actually do? I mean, they're proposing, I guess, for us what they would like to see yes, in matter. our city. Yeah. It does <laughs> so seem we're backwards. Not right, so yeah. we're not proposing anything. Mm -hmm. They're proposing what should be in our city. Okay, yeah, I just it, wanted to get that. Yes, clear. that's what happens. It okay. seems backwards to me as well. I will tell you, in, in fairness, our government does put some criteria in there about what we would like to see. Um, and then they need to bring forward what, what they're capable of doing. I think that's very backwards. I think that's why my survey of what the people need and want is so critical, because then we can take that, go out nationally and market that and say, this is what our people value. We have a legitimate survey that says, this is what they'll, where they'll spend their money. This is what they want to invest in. And then we go out and we market that nationally. And then that's when it's the developer's opportunity to come back and say, I think I can make that happen. Okay, okay. So these other outside guys come in and, and pretty much can do what we ask them to do. Right. Um, okay, I got it. Now yeah. I know what the RFP is for. <laughs> yes, that's what it's for. Thank you, thank you. Um, next question. How would you or how do you deal with transitional government? Uh, being a candidate for mayor, uh, one of two candidates, one of you will make it into the mayor's spot and have this transitional period. How do you or how have you dealt with that? Um, if you if you mean specifically that um, my opponent could remain on the commission um, if I'm the next mayor, how right. would I deal with that right. specifically? Your team coming into the mayor's office or the team that's already there. Sure. You know, um, my opponent and I don't have nearly um, as exciting of a relationship as the press would like to make out. I mean, 90 to 95 percent of the time, as my opponent has said, we agree on what comes in front of us as a commission. It's those really high profile issues that we're both very passionate about that we disagree on. So um, I would not say there is much um, angst or controversy between the two of us as people would like to make out. Right. However, I will say, you know, a distinct difference between him and myself is that I feel very strongly about property taxes. We've talked about that a lot today. and. Um, when I ran for office in 07 the first time, I told my constituents, I will not raise your property taxes, and I'm a person of my word. And so two years into my term, when that came up, I did not vote for a property tax increase, and my opponent did. And then four years into my term, I did not vote for a property tax increase, and my opponent did. And you know, it's not just the increase, it's the fact that it has been the largest increase in property taxes in over a decade and a half in Wyandotte County. And yet, all we see in the news media are ribbon cuttings going on out in Western Wyandotte County. So people can't seem to understand that we have a lot of issues that we need to look at. Yeah, we've had some success in Western Wyandotte County. It has truly been phenomenal. We are recognized nationally. It's an amazing thing, and we want to continue that moving forward. Okay. But if we don't get the issues in um, other areas of our county, Midtown and the Urban Core addressed, um, we're going to have some serious property tax issues, which is eventually going to stifle the development in Western Wyandotte. Okay. Personal question. Sure. Is there anyone in politics or beyond that you marry yourself after? Um, that's Any a influential really chill person. Here. Yeah, that's a really tough question. You know, until I ran for office in um, 07, um, I really wasn't very connected to politics. You know, I married a pretty political family. My uh, sister in law was um, lucky enough to work for President Clinton. 
he, she was her uh, the de deputy director of legislative affairs. Um, that was sort of my first introduction to politics. Both my husband and my other sister-in-law, Mary Mergia, mm -hmm. were appointed to the federal bench um, by President Clinton. And recently, President Obama appointed my sister-in-law, Mary Mergia, to the um, U.S. District Court of Appeals. And if you haven't seen this, um, uh, President Obama has mentioned um, Mary Mergia as one of the potential next Supreme Court justices. Wow. Was on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. So just being part of that family was sort of my introduction to politics, and they all have really been very helpful in educating me about politics and and how things work, and um, they've been very helpful, and they're very inspiring family. I mean, they grew up here in Wyandotte County, and there were, you know, seven children. They lived in a very small two-bedroom bungalow um, right there in Argentine, and, um, you know, their their mother is um, a migrant, and their, their father was born here, but um, they were, you know, low-income family, and they worked very hard, and I'm very proud of them. They have four attorneys in their family. Um, Ramon mm -hmm. Murguia, my brother-in-law, graduated from Harvard Law School. He has a very impressive resume, and they've mm -hmm. just, they're, they're the American dream, and I would say that I don't know if it's politics or it's just that they're just flat out inspiring. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the family. That's the family. Okay. Well, I'm um, gonna wrap this up, and I'm gonna give you the rest of the time. Um, which is one minute I'm, on, I'm, I'm hearing here in my ear. Um, any statements that you would like before the general election about becoming mayor of Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas? Sure, you know, I understand that Wyandotte County is sort of a small town and a lot of information is carried word of mouth. And if anyone out there is um, sitting on the fence about who to vote for in the mayoral election, I'd really appreciate a phone call um, somebody to reach out to me to ask me what their specific concern is so that I have the opportunity to address this. You know, this election is very important. With the last eight years, we've seen, uh, as I said, a large increase in property taxes. And as we come out of this, you know, economic recession and property values begin to increase again, we're going to start to feel the increases of property tax over the last eight years. And you need to make sure mm -hmm. that you're electing a mayor that's sensitive to that. You're also electing a mayor that is going to work with BPU to get those rates, those utility rates, the, at the lowest possible rate for the constituent. Right. Um, I'm committed to that. I think my experience and my results in my district demonstrate my ability to get things done. Um, and I just really appreciate it if people would reach out to me if they have questions or concerns. and not rely on gossip right. or you know whisper campaigns to um, make their decision for them. Um, I'm available all the time and I'll definitely return their call. You have some pretty big endorsements. Yes. <laughs> you do. I do. I'm I very excited by that. Yes. You know, there's a long list, you know, um, they didn't get a lot of press, the coverage didn't, but if you go to my website, which is uh, annmergia.com, okay. you'll get to click on endorsement. You'll get to see all the people that are supporting me in my campaign. It truly is a a grassroots campaign. I have um, people from all corners of Wyandotte County, from all backgrounds coming together. It's it's so unusual to have such great union support and yet also great business support from the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and other businesses and um, developers countywide and even, you know, in the region. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to wrap this up. Great. Thank you so much for being with us, and congratulations yeah. to both you and to Mark Holland on putting your hat in the ring for gov. I mean, for mayor, governor. D yeah, for you're mayor. ahead of the game there. I'm way ahead of the game <laughs> yeah. for mayor of Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas. Yes. And we would welcome uh, you with welcome arms, open arms. Mm -hmm. And again, thank you for coming to our show, and you're welcome back anytime. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I really appreciate it. All right, and we'll see you next time on Conversations.